I think uh, M&A uh, has a very positive outlook uh, currently because the macroeconomic situation in Egypt is much improved. Uh, the FX is uh, stable. Uh, uh, foreign investors are comfortable that they can uh, repatriate uh, dividends and exit proceeds. Um, and generally, the, all the economic indicators are positive. Uh, so I believe that the, the outlook for M&A is, is rather positive. The pipelines are, are pretty strong. Uh, there are various factors why this is the case. I think one of them, which is often ignored, apart from strategic investors and, and, and financial investors from abroad, we have now a strong local ecosystem. We have a lot of uh, fund managers that are based in, in Cairo, and they are obviously mandated to uh, uh, conclude deals in Egypt. Uh, there are many names now, and uh, that's one element why I'm very comfortable with the pipeline and the M&A outlook on top, of course, of FDI coming into the country and the usual suspects, big financial investors uh, with a Middle East outlook or an Africa outlook that by design are looking at the Egyptian market. I think the, the biggest challenge facing Egypt is exportation. Uh, I think this is something that needs a lot of work and it's, we thought that with the currency devaluation there would be a lot more export, but the relationship between a competitive currency and export is not linear. There's a lot to be done to build an, uh, a proper uh, ecosystem that is conducive of exportation, that encourages exportation. A lot of it requires uh, government intervention. A lot of it also requires the private sector to organize itself uh, to enable uh, this to happen. Uh, so I think um, this is the part or the element that is missing in the, in the puzzle. If we generate more export, it will reflect much more positively on the currency situation and also on other key macroeconomic indicators. The other element I think uh, that we need to consider when we look at the budget in order to reduce the budget deficit, because we're resorting to a lot of borrowing currently, is tax reform as well. We need to generate more tax revenues for, for the government. So I think those two factors are very important. And obviously, uh, the taxation is more sensitive because much more taxes could be uh, influencing uh, investment in a negative way. So it's a balance and it's a bit challenging. It would have to be, again, macroeconomic uh, instability. Uh, we are much more positive now than we used to be, the sentiment at least is. But anybody that is taking a medium to long term view, uh, seeing certain risks in the macroeconomic situation is not unavoidable until we uh, can cut the budget deficit a bit and we have more exportation. This is what will make investors believe more in Egypt. Also, to be very honest, political uh, concerns are, are not going to go away unless and until uh, the situation on the political side, on the constitutional side, uh, is, is stable for many years. Uh, because yes, we have stability now, but coming off the back of what happened in 2011 and what happened later, still some investors are a bit worried. What we do for them is, is, is basically manage their risks. So a lot of times, and you know, the, the size of the target determines the type of risk situation we have. So medium com size companies, which are very common now in M&A deals in Egypt, the problem is, and it was touched upon in the panel, is that the size of the ticket is, does not merit all of this expenditure on due diligence, commercial, financial, uh, and legal. So what we try to do as advisors is we share a bit of the risk with the investors uh, based on certain things that were mentioned in the panel, like having a competitive fee structure that is based on success, focusing on red flags or high risk items, the things that really matter, that's very, very important. So that's one element. The other element is uh, Egypt is, you know, each jurisdiction is a different animal, obviously, in terms of the risks. So in Egypt, for example, licensing is a very big concern on the legal side because there are so many licensing requirements and very few companies, especially the med medium sized companies, very common again in M&A deals in Egypt, uh, are not really compliant or fully compliant. So we need to take a view on what the licensing portfolio of the target looks like and whether it's a go or a no go or there are certain risks that need to be managed and what to do after the acquisition to ensure better compliance and help the investor with the exit later on. 
Same thing for tax, we don't do tax as lawyers, but our colleagues, financial and tax advisors, also need to manage the tax risks and zoom in on the problem and quantify it properly. And then between us and them, as you know, the, the advice we get on the due diligence from taxation experts, how we reflect that in the transaction documents. Actually, the most uh, interesting sectors are the ones that see more M&A deals, yeah. maybe not in terms of size, but in terms of number of deals. Uh, they are the sectors that uh, are defensive mm -hmm. and grow with the population growth. So health, definitely very interesting. All kinds of investments in health, whether it's hospitals, labs, uh, pharmaceutical companies, pharmaceutical distribution companies, and, and, and many other players in the health field. Same for education, K-12, higher ed, very interesting. Uh, on top of that, uh, FMCG, consumer finance, non-banking financial, all of those sectors that are defensive, that are also, uh, you know, grow in terms of size and revenue based on the growth of the population, which is immense, and they are resilient as well. So those are the sectors that investors really focus on. Apart from those, there are still energy and infrastructure are still very big uh, uh, investment opportunities, usually for strategic investors. Uh, so they will never go away because energy is, is, is uh, a key need for, for Egypt and also because Egypt has natural resources uh, and infrastructure because it's one of the elements that the current regime and the current government focuses on. So there are a lot of investments in those two sectors as well.